So let me uh, introduce Martin. Martin Besner joined Staties in 2014, and we are happy to have him named President and Chief Technical Officer in 2020. He oversees the development of features in Design Expert software. Martin co-authored the book, Formulation Simplified, Finding the Sweet Spot Through Design and Analysis of Experiments with Mixtures. Besides his DOE experience, Martin is skilled at Bayesian statistics, statistical modeling, and statistical computing. Martin graduated with a bachelor's degree in mathematics from the University of Loyola, Chicago in 2009, and then went on to earn his PhD in statistics in 2015 from the University of Minnesota. So uh, please join me in welcoming Martin Besner. Uh, thank you, Sherry. Can you, can you hear me? We can hear you, yes. Okay, uh, so Sherry, thank you very much for that, for that introduction. As Sherry said, my name is Martin Besner and I'm the president and, and CTO at Stadies. Uh, it's always fun to do uh, an event with Stadies. Uh, we used to do these conferences in Europe and in the US sometimes uh, in person. Hopefully one day we'll be able to reactivate those when uh, travel isn't so onerous anymore. Uh, and I'm really excited to be here today uh, to talk about some new developments from studies that are, that are coming uh, very shortly. So in particular today, I'm gonna be talking about the debut of our new product, Stadies 360, which has been long awaited, highly requested, and uh, hopefully I can give you some information about that. Uh, the roadmap for the future, where studies will go going forward, and so on. So, uh, just a quick little agenda. Uh, I'll kind of briefly recap uh, Design Expert, which is our long standing flagship DOE software that I presume everybody here has, has used at some point. Uh, I'll also talk about some of the shortfalls and maybe where we haven't done such a great job with Design Expert or maybe what, you know, what people have been asking us for. And then talk about what inspired us to launch a, a second product. Uh, I'll spend a, a good, you know, the majority of the time talking about what the features are and kind of what the roadmap is, is for our new product, which is, you know, as you should know by now it's called Stadies 360. And then afterwards, I'll let you know how you can find more information um, about this. So uh, for those of you that uh, you know that are that are here that have been with Stadies for some time are probably familiar with Design Expert, which has been a leading, one of the leading software packages in the design and analysis of experiments. And that's really been our niche. It's been our focus uh, is strictly design of experiments or DOE. This is a software package that has uh, that was developed in the mid 1980s by Pat Whitcomb, who was also the founder of Stadies. Um, and for those of you that don't know, he retired last year uh, in April of uh, 2020. Although he's still he's still around um, doing webinars, doing some you know consulting here and there, but largely he's uh, living on the beach for, for the most part uh, after a long and successful career. Um, and, you know, and he was an engineer and he developed this package, uh, you know, uh, for engineers largely. Uh, and the focus has always been on providing cutting edge, easy to use tools, okay, that don't require lengthy, formal, rigorous, you know, statistical training. Um, while we do have some people who use Design Expert that have master's degrees or even PhDs in statistics, our target audience has almost always been, you know, the everyday engineer, somebody working in R&D, somebody doing drug development, formulation development, paints, coatings, aerospace, uh, you know, dozens of different industries. So that's really been uh, kind of our, where, where the heart of Design Expert has been. And as you can see here, this was Design Expert, you know, just five or six years ago, and it's kind of progressed into a slightly more modern looking uh, software package over the last five or six years. 
Uh, we have some people that go back to Design Expert that still have floppy disks from the late 80s, uh, CDs from the mid 90s, and you know, offer them. You know, will sometimes send us pictures, and it's really interesting to see kind of how things have developed over the years. So, just some highlights of our most recent releases. Uh, in Design Expert uh, 9, which is right around when I became a full-time employee of Staties, that's where I would consider the, you know, the modern era of Design Expert began, which is when we started including split plots, mixed models, uh, really developing our optimal designs. Uh, in 2016, we released Design Expert 10, which uh, really brought the computing into the modern era. That's when we had our first 64-bit build of the software available. Uh, and that's also when we started using um, threading and multi-core and really trying to speed up some of the computations for people doing very complex uh, optimal designs. Uh, just uh, about 18 months later, uh, this was kind of a shock to some people, but the entire, you know, that dated uh, original user interface we had got overhauled and refreshed. Uh, and we also released a Mac version. And that was, you know, we, we received a lot of appreciation when we did the UI overhaul uh, because, you know, that the heart of the program remained largely the same. It looked better, it functioned better, it was a little more smooth and polished, but at the end of the day, the workflow was largely unchanged um, and it only really got better. And then the last few years of Design Expert have been focused on, the last two releases have been largely focused on kind of getting our our, our, our toolkit of bread and butter analysis techniques and DOE techniques filled out. So things like logistic regression, Poisson regression, um, tools like being able to expand your, your design space and iteratively experiment. Uh, things that make life a lot easier, like being able to round mixture components off to, you know, one or two decimal places. So that's really been, you know, kind of the last seven or so years of design expert development. Now, um, this is, you know, over the past few years, we've been thinking about, you know, um, we have received steady requests for more advanced DOE tools. Um, as I mentioned before, our user base is largely uh, engineers and chemists and biologists and formulators and students and whatnot, but we do receive requests for more sophisticated methods. Um, we've also received demand, consistently received demand for tools that are adjacent to DOE. So they're not really truly DOE, but, um, but they kind of are, or they're kind of related in the same workflow. So things like design and analysis of computer experiments, gauge R&R, also known as measurement systems analysis, more computing abilities, uh, statistical process control, uh, and any number of these kind of um, tools that aren't really DOE, but are used a lot by the same people who do DOE. Uh, historically, in the interest of keeping Design Expert as simple and accessible as possible to as many people, um, we've usually kind of tabled these requests and put them on the list and saw if, what, what we can do with them. But about a year ago, a year or two ago, we realized that demand has just been compounding. It's gotten very large. We've gotten lots of requests for um, advanced stuff, non-DOE stuff that really we can't wait anymore and we had to do something about it. But then at the same time, we were a little bit, uh, you know, we felt a little bit hamstrung by this philosophy that you know design expert had to be very simple it had to be accessible and so on so kind of having come to that uh fork in the road we've decided to create a, a second product called Stadis 360 which we will be launching within a week so as i mentioned before Stadis 360 is actually going to be released next week okay um, design Estadis 360 will include a full copy of the Design Expert software. So you don't need to use two different packages if you want to use, you know, some of the capabilities of Estadis 360 and you also want to use Design Expert. You only need to use one of the products and it will always contain the latest version of Design Expert. 
However, the first release of Stadis 360 will also, in addition to containing everything that Design Expert contains, will also contain some of our more, most highly requested advanced DOE features. Okay, so these are things that, you know, your typical formulator that's working on paints might not necessarily be using on a day-to-day -day basis, um, but we have a lot of people that, some people that do need to use this. So things like the first release will include optimal space filling designs, okay? Um, Latin hypercube designs. Gaussian process models for zero error data. And these three features uh, largely fall into kind of the realm of, the, you know, DOE for uh, computer experiments, okay? We also, after, you know, many years of requests, we've also added scripting capability uh, into Stadis 360. So you'll be able to basically uh, use Python, the, the, it's a, it's a, programming language called Python, which is currently the most popular programming language in the world, um, to basically control design expert, uh, write scripts, and so on. So this is, you know, going to allow you to do things, you know, I'll talk about this, in, you know, towards the end of this, this presentation, but um, we finally will have scripting capabilities. Now, this is not something that everybody's going to use. If somebody's just doing a simple three and four component experiment on on uh you know on three different polymers or whatever you know you might not necessarily need to use it but for our advanced users you know we've gotten a lot of requests for scripting and then finally advanced classification tools for logistic regression so we have some people that do predictions and that do things like um more machine learning type of you know combining doe with more machine learning type of uh inference and we've provided some advanced tools to help you do that if that's something that you're doing. Okay, so wh where's the roadmap going forward? Well, going forward, design experts not going anywhere. It's still gonna be continue to be targeted towards engineers, formulators, and others working in R&D. And remember, Stadis 360 contains all of design experts. So you don't need to use two different, use and learn two different packages. Uh, Stadis 360 is really just, you know, adds on to design experts. So going forward, any of the easy to use and bread and butter DOE techniques will go into Design Expert and therefore into Stadis 360. Highly advanced non-DOE and highly technical and computational features will only go into Stadis 360. Here are just some ideas that we have for the future. Now, these are not, you know, the first, th the first two things that we put in were design and analysis of computer experiments and scripting. However, just some ideas. These are kind of our most highly requested features that we've gotten over the years. One is gauge R and R or measurement systems analysis. That's something that we're looking into very closely now. Um, we've gotten lots of requests for statistical process control. Uh, you know, kind of a SPC made easy, so to speak. Uh, multivariate analysis is one that crops up fairly regularly. Uh, and then finally more advanced scripting computing i mean we've gotten requests for people that say i want i have a very high end you know graphics card and i want to be able to do some you know computing on the gpu and then i want to send it to design expert and then i want to have python do this and then i want to take the results and send them to some other simulation software so these are all things that we're looking forward to this isn't a, a concrete roadmap by any means but these are just kind of some of the things that are um at uh the top of our list right now so let, what i want to do now is spend kind of the second half looking more closely at some of the 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 the, the features that are going to be in the the premier version of Stadis 360. so the first big one is design and analysis of computer experiments now we deal a lot with people who are in the lab doing experiments um, but we also have some people that experiment, but they never actually go in the lab. What they do is they have a, a computer simulation that does the experiment. So for those of you that aren't familiar with kind of the difference between a computer experiment and a physical experiment, here's just a brief one slide summary of what's going on here. So 
in a, you know, if you've ever done a physical experiment and you've tried to replicate, you know, basically do the same set of conditions twice, maybe on different days, you know, the, 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 the chance is almost zero that you're going to get the exact same measurement or output every single time. There's measurement error. Sometimes, you know, you don't set your factors uh, precisely each time. Sometimes, you know, you have day-to-day -day variability, you know, different operators, different lab techs, different lots of raw materials. This isn't an issue in computer experiments. The output is deterministic. So typically you'll set some factors, you'll run a simulation, and you'll get your output. Um, so as I said, a computer simulation rather than a physical experiment is run to obtain the output. And hence, repeating a simulation for a given set of factors or conditions will usually, I mean, it should in theory produce identical results. And when we work with people uh, who do these types of experiments, a lot of times, you know, obtaining a single run can be extremely, extremely time intensive. I mean, we're talking, you know, sometimes it could take a week for a simulation to run to obtain a single data point. Okay. And because of kind of this, uh, you know, this difference here, um, certain features in your ordinary DOEs, okay, things like replicates no longer make sense. So you need a special, you know, you typically use different DOEs, different experimental designs if you have uh, this type of data. And just to, um, you know, make a, a small little aside here, there have been cases I've seen over the years where somebody has uh, a, 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 a process in a, in a lab or an experiment they're doing in a lab that's naturally very, very, very low error, meaning, you know, there's a high, there's, you know, basically um, a high level of repeatability. And a lot of the stuff that I talk about here uh, carries over into those settings as well. So here's just a little, you know, sketch I put together of how, you know, how a physical experiment would differ from a computer experiment. So aerospace is one very common, um, sector where uh, computer exper uh, where computer experiments are widespread. So in a physical experiment, let's say you wanted to test the configuration of some aircraft, you know, in a physical experiment, you'd actually, you know, build your aircraft. You'd, you know, you'd tweak something, maybe the wingspan, maybe the, you know, the, the, the shape of the fuselage, the diameter, maybe some, you know, some other settings you would, you would tweak and then, you know, you'd build it. And then you'd go over to your, you know, your wind tunnel or whatever, um, or, you know, in the very, very early days, you'd actually uh, fly the aircraft and test it that way. And then what you do is you write down your results here, okay? Well, in a computer experiment, what you would do is you typically have a good enough understanding kind of, a, of, of how all the physics works, enough that you could actually write, a, um, you know, kind of a script or use simulation software to simulate what would happen, for example, in a wind tunnel. So you would take all the different parameters of the aircraft, um, you know, you'd have some governing equations from physics and from, you know, aerospace engineering and, 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 uh, and uh, fluid dynamics and all that. And you'd kind of set up a simulation to see, well, what happens when I, you know, have a wingspan of this length or whatever, what do I, how do I expect the characteristics of the, you know, flight to change um, in that case? And then you'd write down your, you know, you'd let the simulation run and you'd get your output and you'd write it down. So at the end of the day, you have a, a spreadsheet with factors and with responses filled in. It's just the way that you obtain them is slightly different. Okay, so. Because the output has no error, things like replicates don't make sense, okay? And, and, you know, if you've ever taken one of our workshops or seen one of our webinars, you'll always see us promoting replicates, you know, do the same run a couple times, you know, independently, just to get a sense of kind of what's the natural variation in your process. Now, in a situation like this, it doesn't necessarily make sense to do replicates, okay? So typically, um, space filling designs are, what we use in you know in situations where we have a computer experiment so these are does that aim to cover the design space without leaving large gaps between the design points so this here is a what we call a maximin space filling design okay as you'll notice um, it covers the space 
very well. And we say maximin because it maximizes the minimum distance between any two points. Okay. Um, now, if you had, say, done this as a de-optimal design, gone to design experts, say, hey, I want to fit a quadratic model. I have a budget of 14 runs. I don't want any replicates. Well, this is what the optimal design is going to look like. And it's actually optimal to do replicates in this case. So something like a de-optimal design, you'll see these points I'm circling here are replicated. Something like a de-optimal design is not um, very good uh, in a situation where you don't want replicates. So you can see now in Stati 360, we'll have these maximum space filling designs. Okay. So you get maximum coverage of the space without replicates. Okay. Uh, so just to talk a little bit about the space filling offerings, we have optimal space filling designs, which I just talked about, and I will um, show off here in just a minute. We also have something called the Latin hypercube design. These designs are very popular in practice, and I'll try to demo them a little bit here in just a minute. But at basically the, the crux or uh, kind of the main story um, with Latin hypercube designs is that, you know, you might have something like two factors, factor A, factor B, and you try to set up this Latin hypercube design. And when you ignore a factor, so if you ignore factor A, you'll see that the designs are space filling for factor B. So there's no conditions where factor B is repeated. So if you just look at the, where these arrows are going, you'll see that level, there's no repeats of level B. And uh, similarly, if I look at factor A here, you'll see that if I, you know, kind of ignore factor B and just make it a one factor experiment, only look at A, you'll see that uh, A is um, space filling and doesn't have any replicates as well. So Latin hypercube designs are, are, are widely used because they ensure that a design doesn't have replicates in any dimension. So it's often common that, you know, a factor is not significant or you want to ignore it or, or whatever. So that ensures that you don't have any points that are stacked on top of each other if you look at the dimensions individually here. Okay, so now I'm just going to show off, uh, you know, kind of our interface for space filling designs in Stati's 360. Um, and just as a note, Space filling designs don't necessarily need, you know, can be used for physical experiments as well. Okay. If you're in a situation where, you know, you don't have a very noisy process, then space filling designs could be a good, could be a good option. If you're looking to do something like an exploratory data analysis, just to get a sense of what your space looks like before you even do any DOE, a space filling design might not be a bad idea. Um, so, and, and a lot of times people just like space filling designs because they like the fact that there's no large gaps. So if there's a situation where, you know, maybe you have a design space that looks like this square and you think there might be a small region which contains some sort of spike or some sort of very large dip in a very small region. Um, if you had something like a de-optimal design, which only had, you know, points here, um, you might not be able to catch that spike or that dip, but with a space filling design, you kind of increase your chances of, of, of catching um, some of those cliffs or some of those uh, spikes, so to speak, that might not be caught with a, with a normal D or I optimal design, okay? And in our, in our, um, in our experience, uh, some common use cases of space filling designs, aerospace is very common, um, because they use a lot of computer experiments there. Medical devices, so, you know, I've seen cases where, you know, a medical device company is trying to develop a new artificial joint, um, and it's very hard to do physical experiments because you would need to, you know, to test it ultimately, you need to actually implant it in somebody and see how it performs. But they have a good understanding of the mechanics and the physics and, and, and whatnot, so they can kind of get some information out of computer experiments. Um, when they're figuring out, you know, how thick the wall of a joint needs to be or what the angle or of rotation needs to be and so on. And logistics is also very common, especially things like if you're, you know, somebody's trying to optimize, uh, um, you know, the 
uh, the design of an intersection or, or, or so to speak. You can't really, you know, um, it, it's not a good idea to do a physical experiment on that. So I'm gonna just briefly move to the software here just for a second, uh, just to, uh, just to show up, just to show. So this is Stati's 360 here. Um, if you go to new design, you'll see that, you know, it still includes design expert, but now you have this space filling node here. And hopefully everybody can uh, see this. Let me just check to make sure what the audience view looks like. And I think we're okay. Um, so as you can see here, we have Latin hypercube designs. Okay. Um, we also have optimal distance designs, and we have two different designs that we offer. We offer distance only. So these are the ones where you would, you know, you don't really care about fitting a polynomial model. It only looks at the distance between two points. And then we have model-based designs as well. So if you're in a situation where you do want to fit a quadratic or cubic polynomial, we do have an algorithm that'll also, you know, make the designs space filling, but also account for the fact that you are fitting a polynomial. So it's going to make, make sure that there's enough unique levels and, 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 and so on. Okay. And all the other things like edit constraints and, uh, and, and whatnot, all of that is still available. So, and the interface is going to change depending on whether you, you're doing a distance only design. So if you click next here, you'll see that you're only able to put in space filling points. If you want to put in replicates, you're more than welcome to, but it's only space filling points here. Okay. And if you pick model based, you'll see that uh, these, you know, this interface here looks a little bit more similar to our usual optimal interface. Okay. So if I wanted to say pick a Latin hypercube design, let's say I had two factors and each factor had eight levels, um, I would go ahead and build it looks like this. And if I look at the graph columns, I can see this is what the design looks like here. Okay, this is just A versus B here. I'm gonna turn off the coloring. Um, and if I plot A versus itself, I'll, you could see that there's no replicates of just A. And if I plot B versus itself, there's no replicates of just B here. All right, so that's available in uh, Stati's 360. And that just deals with setting up the designs. So now um, the next question is, is how do we actually analyze this, uh, this data? Okay. Um, historically, we've always used polynomial models, but we'll see that they're often not adequate for modeling data that comes from a computer experiment. Okay, we need something a little bit more sophisticated. So suppose we have, we collect data that looks like this. This is just one factor and I'm, you know, measuring a response that looks like this. Okay, very simple. Normally we would use a polynomial model that would look something like this. Okay, and this is coming just right out of Stati's 360 here. You can notice that we now We'll soon have the uh, interval shading available, another highly requested feature. That'll be in both Design Expert and Statis 360. But you can see that, you know, kind of the opt of the, the a quadratic model would look something like this. Okay. Now there is a big issue with this. Um, remember, when we're dealing with a situation where, where the data is simulated or coming from a zero error process, my model should be in theory predicting these points perfectly here. In other words, when I plug in A equals 0.2, okay, I should get a prediction that's at this point here, okay? Um, same thing here, if I plug in A equals 0.4 roughly, I should get a prediction that's there because I know that if I repeat the simulation or I repeat the, the run, I'm gonna get exactly the same result. So I shouldn't be getting any prediction error there. I could be getting prediction error in between points, but I shouldn't be getting it at the points. So the big issue, as I said, is that the model should predict the response perfectly. And this should say, I should say at the design points. So this is not, um, this is not throughout the entire space since there's no error. However, it's really impossible to do this with a polynomial model unless you basically fit as many terms in the model as there are runs in the data set. So you're basically doing a perfect fit, which is not ideal. 
So one tool that's very common for these situations is called the Gaussian process model, okay? And there is a, I don't have a ton of time to show off all the, all the little details. We will have a webinar in November for this, but if you're looking for a tutorial, it's available on our website. Um, and, it's, and it will be available through the, the help system of SATIS 360, okay? Um, so I'm just gonna quickly demo space filling designs. This is an example that's kind of prepackaged with SATIS 360. So if you wanna go through it, you can go through it on your own. Um, but I'll just kind of show it off here so that you can see uh, see what it looks like. So I'm gonna move back to the software. I'll go ahead and close this design here. And I'm just going to go to help. Remember, we have tutorial data here, and there's a new one called gas station. Now, this isn't uh, you know, a very industrial example here. This is kind of a really fun example that a gas station used some years ago. Um, what they did is they created a space filling design um, and then used simulation to obtain their th uh, three responses here. Okay, if you look at the, uh, so what, what we have here is we have two factors. The factors are the number of pumps at the gas station, as well as the, the size of the underground storage tank or the gas, okay? This is what the experimental design looked like. You can see that it was, you know, they used the space filling design and uh, they didn't do, I believe they didn't do any runs at the corners because here it was prohibitively expensive and here it was just, it just didn't make sense to run it because they knew they were gonna get garbage results. You can see there are no replicates here and it's, you know, roughly a space filling. So what they did is they set up a simulation in run number one where a gas station had seven pumps and a tank size of 8,100, I believe it was gallons. Okay, and then what they did is, you know, they basically took a bunch of information they had, wrote a simulation to see what would be the average wait time in seconds here. How many vehicles out of, I think they simulated it with uh, 2,300 vehicles per day, something along those lines. And then they simulated how many vehicles would abandon the gas station because the wait time was too long and then proportion as well. So this was divided by the total number of cars. And then response four was actually the cost of this setup, meaning a seven pump gas station and a 8,100 gallon storage tank. And I believe it took, I don't remember exactly, but it was on the order of several hours to simulate each of these runs. So they wrote some code, they, you know, they may have used some existing simulation software for logistics or for traffic or whatever, and then gotten the, the results this way. Now, of course, in theory, they should be able to, you know, simulate any particular combination of pumps and tank size, but you know, it's just not feasible to do that if it's taking a day or two to get a single one of these data points, okay? So as you can see here, this is what the setup looks like. So it largely looks like a, a physical experiment, but um, now in Stadis 360, when you're analyzing, you have, um, let's look at average wait time, you have the option to use linear regression, which is something that you'd be able to use before, or we also have some special models now. And Stadis 360 will detect what special models are uh, compatible with your data set. So in this case, you can use Gaussian process models um, because you have continuous data um, and so on. So I'll just go ahead and show you what a model like this looks like. So this is what um, the model looks like here. Now notice how the Gaussian process model goes through all of the points, but it also does a nice job of kind of interpolating between the points, okay? A Gaussian process model has a tuning parameter. Uh, it's called a smoothing parameter, which tells you basically how far out it looks when it's interpolating. You're also able to, you know, keep terms in and out of the model, just like you would be able to uh, before. And you can use, you know, manual input of the smoothing parameter, maximum likelihood, or cross-validation for this, okay? If you wanted to, you can create a new, if you wanted to compare this to what a polynomial model would look like, you can look at creating a new response by clicking on the plus button here. This was something that was added in Design Expert 12. And I can reanalyze the average wait time, but I can call this, you know, average wait time 
OLS, so I know that it's linear regression. And what I can do is just see what a quadratic model looks like here if I really wanted to. Okay, so as you can see, this is what a quadratic model looks like, and it might not be, um, you know, an awful model, but it's not really appropriate since I know that at my design points, um, you know, I should be getting perfect predictions here because it's a, it's, it's a no error response. So if I compare the two, I get, you know, um, something that looks like this, okay, versus a very simple uh, OLS model uh, here. Okay. You could also reanalyze the vehicles abandoned, the fraction abandoned, use a cost equation, use numerical optimization. All of that is largely largely held over. Um, but this is a tool that we that we now have available in Design Expert. Very highly, you know, requested. I know there are Gaussian process models that allow you to incorporate some error, which is something that's on our list going forward. Um, but in, a, in the case of a computer experiment, you probably wouldn't want to, you know, um, where you have no error, you probably want to model it as so. Okay, so that should hopefully give you at least a flavor of what we have in Stadis 360. Now, to avoid running over time, I'm going to uh, move on to our next big feature, which is Python scripting. Um, and I'm not going to talk too much about it because there's a one hour webinar tomorrow morning that Hank Anderson, our VP of software development, is going to give. So um, a very highly requested feature has been scripting. People want to write their own custom scripts. They want to automate processes. They want to do some data processing on the side. Um, they want to, you know, basically be able to write some simple code to help with the workflow, with their DOE workflow. So Stadis 360 can incorporate Python scripts directly within the software. And as I said, tomorrow, Wednesday morning, Hank Anderson will give a talk on this topic in more detail. He'll actually go through a couple of different examples. He'll tell you how you can get it set up. A big question we got during the beta phase was why Python? Why not, you know, this? Why not Fortran? Why not R? Why not, uh, you, know, a, you know, insert your favorite scripting language? And he'll talk about that, but largely the reason is, is is because it's the most popular language out there these days. It's what people are learning in schools. It's what's used in engineering. Um, so it's you know he'll give more more info on that tomorrow. And here's just a small sampling of what you will be able to do with Python scripting. So you can write scripts to automate routine processes. So sometimes people will do the same DOE every week, we a week in and week out. Uh, they want to be able to automate that. Well, with Python scripting, you can do that. You can create simulations. So sometimes people want to simulate, you know, they want to build a, a design, an optimal design 10,000 times, or they want to, you know, generate 10,000 random data sets and have design expert do something with them and see what the results are. You can do that with, with the Python scripting. You'll also be able to use, you know, now Python has a very large ecosystem. It's expansive. It's got, you know, packages that can do just about anything. So you'll be able to combine features of Stadis 360 with uh, features from relevant Python packages. Um, and sometimes people will tell us, hey, you know, I want to be able to generate this plot that's, um, that's, you know, very complicated, that's got all this stuff going on, that's got animation and different types of shading and, and whatnot. It's really hard to make things super customizable um, when you have to go through a user, you know, kind of a point and click user interface, but through scripting, it's not such a big deal. And finally, one of the big ones is, you know, a lot of times people will use design expert in conjunction with other software packages. And right now there's not a super easy way to transfer the data between, you know, one package to another, to a third one and back to design expert and so on. Through Python, you can actually do that a lot easier and you can automate that. So these are just, this is just a, a very small sampling of things you'll be able to do. And in Stadis uh, 360, you'll have uh, the ability, this is not present in Design Expert, you'll see that there's a button here called Script Editor. And when you click on Script Editor, it'll launch this window here where you can write your Python script. Okay. So it's interactive. You can, you know, run chunks of code. You can go between Design Expert and, 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 and Python very, very um, seamlessly here. 
So again, as I said, tomorrow is really the, you know, the big talk on, on that feature. Finally, the last feature I mentioned is advanced classification tools. So um, we have noticed an uptick of, of, of some advanced users that are doing, you know, kind of combining machine learning um, analytics with DOE. Um, so one of our, 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 our big features is logistic regression, which is something that we had added to Design Expert in version 12, and it's still in Stati 360. Um, and for those of you that aren't familiar with logistic regression, the purpose of logistic regression is to model binary. Typically, it's zero one data and to predict basically where a one is going to occur. So here's a simple example that I have, which is um, plants that are getting a specific dose of um, some sort of treatment applied to them. And then, you know, after a week, somebody sees whether the plant survived or didn't. I mean, there's really only one or, you know, it, it either survived or it didn't. Um, so I think they tested something like 60 plants, each one got a different dose, and then they tried to model the probability of survival based on um, the dose that they were given. And this is a slightly simplified illustration of that, but, you know, the idea is the same. Um, but once you have, once you're dealing with probabilities, uh, you want to be able to predict things. I mean, the original reason why logistic regression was um, developed way back in the day was to predict, you know, whether somebody would default on their mortgage or not based on things like their income and their credit history and their occupation and, and their age and, and whatnot. So um, lots of times people want to do an experiment, but then they want to use that information to make predictions about the future or, or interpolate or or, you know, at some point, sometimes people need to make a zero or one, you know, decision, meaning do we proceed or not? Um, so Statis 360 offers a wide array of tools to assist with binary classification and prediction. Um, these tools are much more advanced than what we would typically put into Design Expert. Um, so what I'm going to do is just show a very, very quick demo to wrap up this talk on classification and prediction tools in Statis 360. Um, so let me go to Statis 360 here, and I'm going to open up that example. I believe it's uh, dose survival here. And this is what I end up getting here. Okay, so this was the original data. This was the dose that the plant was given, and this is just a measurement if it survived or not. Okay, so as you can see, the special models in the in our configure tab, you can still use linear regression as zero one data, although it's not recommended. But if you want to, you can also use logistic regression for binary data here, okay? Um, I'm just gonna fit this, uh, you know, for the sake of time, I'm just gonna show the same model that I had shown in the, um, in the slide. And you can see here now that there's an additional tab in Statis 360 called the classification view. So be, you know, hold on to, the, hold on to your, your seats because there's kind of a lot that's going on here. You'll see that we have lots of statistics here on in-sample and out-of-sample classification. We now have this predicted versus actual plot of, you know, um, there, there's a million things you can do here. Um, ROC curves. Uh, you could do things like um, look at a receiving operating characteristics curve here, both in-sample and leave one out. We also have some threshold plots here at the bottom. These are basically when you need to make a, a zero or one decision. You know, what is essentially kind of the best cutoff that you're gonna use to say, okay, this is a one, th this is a zero. It's not necessarily gonna be above 50% or lower than 50%. Um, but so we do an in sample and we do a leave one out um, plot here. So you can actually go through and pick kind of what is the best best cutoff here. So. Lots of things here, um, way more than, uh, than we have time to show here, but hopefully that should at least give you an idea of what's going on. So finally, I'll wrap up here just with a single slide. So Statis 360, as I mentioned, will be available October 4th, which is next week. It'll be available for both Windows and Mac. Right now, we only have plans to release a 64-bit version. Um, 99, I would say 99% of the people that are using Design Expert are using the 64-bit version, although, or are capable of using a 64-bit version, although we still get, you know, the occasional request for 32-bit um, builds. That's probably going to be going away. 
Um, so at the end of the day, Stati 360 is essentially building on top of Design Expert without having to overcomplicate Design Expert because, like I said, the best feedback we get from people is that Design Expert is easy to use. It's simple. I can find everything I need very quickly. Um, by adding more and more complicated things or non-DOE things, we risk kind of losing the magic of the simplicity of, of Design Expert. So we're building um, onto that with Stati 360 here. Um, so things like non-DOE engineering tools are probably going to be in Stati 360. And I highly recommend consider attending the 2021 Stati Summit tomorrow, which will kick off with a one hour demo of Python, okay? And even if you don't use scripting now or you don't have a need to do it, I mean, you still may realize, you know, you might be inspired when you see this talk and realize that, hey, maybe I can, you know, improve or speed up my workflow or, or, or do really great things by um, looking into scripting. And this launch is really only the beginning. I mean, this is, you know, we're gonna be releasing an update in December, uh, and then we'll have, you know, regular updates anywhere from six to 12 months or even faster at this point um, going forward. So, you know, one thing that Stadis, I think, has always done a great job of, even way before I came on board, is listening to what uh, users want. Uh, we see, you know, when we teach our workshops, when we give our webinars, when we do consulting, we always like to see, you know, how are people using the software? What is it that, you know, we're lacking? So um, user feedback is really going to be the biggest driver of this going forward. Um, and that's something that's not going to change. And of course, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. We will be sending out some um, uh, emails regarding the launch, giving you know some some opportunities to uh, to get a, a free trial of this if you would like. Um, we'll have a, a series of webinars in the fall, so I'll do a one-hour webinar just on space filling designs and Gaussian process models. So there will be a one-hour webinar on that, I believe, in in November. Uh, there's a Python uh, one tomorrow. So, and if you have any questions or any suggestions or anything you don't like or anything you love, I mean, feel free to reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to listen and set up a call with you or or, or, or do anything so that we can help you, you know, make the best of all of your of all of your experiments. So, I want to thank everyone for for listening here. I want to, you know, it's really a, a pleasure to to be here. And uh, looking at the time, um, I see we still have about five to ten minutes for questions. So, Sherry, I don't know if you're um, if you can yep. hear this. If you want to jump in um, and uh, uh, yes, and take it from here. Um, so, uh, Arvid and Harding uh, submitted a couple of questions. So, let me read the first one. Um, can the Gaussian model be exported to Excel just like the normal polynomial models, so that they can be used in other ways? Um, probably through our Python scripting, that would be a possibility, but the way that um, those models are fit is it's largely interpolation, so it's really hard. There's no, um, as far as I know, um, uh, I'm not sure if there's a closed, a readily available closed form equation that you can just export. Um, mm -hmm. so, so yeah, so that's a great question to ask Hank tomorrow. Yep. Okay. Um, then secondly, since there is no random variation um, for those um, um, space filling designs and Gaussian models, uh, what's the value or is there a value of random, randomization? Uh, programming wise, it's usually easier not to. So I guess the question is, you know, could those designs be not randomized? I would say probably yes. Um, now, if there is some sort of simulation that you ran that has, you know, kind of like carryover effects programmed into it, meaning, you know, what happened in run one might have some effect on what happens in run two, um, then maybe you would want to consider order effects. But otherwise, if the, the simulations are totally independent of one another, uh, things like randomization are also not really an issue like they would be in a physical experiment. So you can run it in any order and you'll get the same exact sequence of outputs. Um, uh, in that case, yeah, randomization would not be an issue. Yeah, and certainly if they uh, double-clicked on the standard column, they would get it in a non-randomized order 
so that makes it easier to run. Right, if there are some simulations that you think will go quicker than other ones, just because maybe the map, maybe, you know, some people would do those first and let the other ones run over the weekend, that's mm -hmm. certainly a possibility. But yeah, if you're gonna get, if you always get the same output, regardless of the order, then yeah, then the randomization, you don't really have those issues. I probably, that's actually a really good one that I probably should have put in here and I'll put in my um, November webinar is the issue of randomization, which um, in, the, in the example I showed would not be an issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Arvid notes that if there's a carryover effect run to run, then this is not a random error. Right, but you'd have to basically, yeah, I mean, if you're doing a, a computer experiment, you'd have to actually somehow figure out, you know, simulate that carryover effect. But if it's a physical experiment, mm -hmm. um, then yes, then, rather, you know, then randomization could be an issue um, in that situation. Okay, sounds good. The other questions that have been posed have been uh, questions about pricing and licensing. Um, and so I'm going to direct anyone who has questions about that to email sales at statease.com and they can help uh, provide information. Thank you. Sales at statease.com. Yep. I'm sorry, my handwriting isn't bad, isn't that good, but that should hopefully get the, get the yeah. point. I can. Um, John Davies asks, is there an augmentation feature for space filling for adaptive sampling? Yeah, so in Design Expert 13, we did release uh, a, an, uh, an augment uh, wizard for, the, for actually expanding the space. So if you see that something's going on in the corner and you realize, hey, you know, I want to do a few more runs maybe around this corner, maybe push it out. That was available in Design Expert 13, and that's still available in space filling design. So you can tweak your, you know, you can kind of adaptively uh, experiment, you know, depending on what the results of each stage look like. You can also add runs. Uh, so that's all available for, for these types of designs. But thank you, Martin, for your time today. We really appreciate it.